our attention to the main event. Max Bernard Hopkins' professional boxing career began here in Atlantic City 26 years ago with a loss to a fighter named Clinton Mitchell, who has since passed away. What does tonight's fight mean to the venerable Hopkins? 26 years. I mean, it's ridiculous. I asked Hopkins yesterday, where would a win tonight rank among his career accomplishments? He said he can't answer that question. That's like asking Michael Jordan which one of his six championship rings is his favorite. But it's not really like that, Bernard. It's more like Michael Jordan going to the Wizards at the end of his career and winning a championship then. Actually, not even that. It's like Jordan never retired with the Wizards, kept playing, led his team to the playoffs every year, and is now playing in the finals. Jordan turned 50 last year. Hopkins is going to turn 50 in two months. They're just about the same age. What Hopkins is trying to do tonight is unparalleled in the history of American sports. This fight came somewhat out of the blue. Most people expected Bernard Hopkins to be fighting Adonis Stevenson later this year as Stevenson defended his share of the light heavyweight crown. Instead, Hopkins, in a sudden, seemingly momentary decision, switched his attention and decided to fight Sergei Kovalev. I began my interview with him a couple days ago with the question about why. On the surface, you chose this fight because you were preserving a title belt under a deadline for making either a unification fight or fighting their chosen mandatory. But I saw an article from about a year ago in which you were quoted as saying, Kovalev, I would beat him easier than I did Kelly Pavlik. So what was the real reason for choosing the Sergei Kovalev fight? One is because that quote, I believe I can, and it is an accurate quote. Second, I want to be the undisputed light heavyweight champion in the world to be probably the first fighter that ever accomplished that. The middleweight division, as we know, and the light heavyweight division. Sergey was the guy that I need to be able to say to people, I fought the dangerous guy out of the three light heavyweight in the world, and let's go. Did you compare Kovalev to Pavlik because you see some natural comparison there, or are you simply using that as the comparison because you beat Pavlik so easily? Both. One is because they're both heavy feet. They got heavy feet. Frankenstein, we call it, in the gym. Second, um, when you're so predictable and throwing punches, to me, it's uh, easy pickings. Hard right hand by Kovalev. Down goes Salak. There's a perception on the part of many that Kovalev is an extremely heavy puncher. Does that mean nothing to you? What is important is that he's looking to do that. That's what he's been successful with. He would never abandon that. So I would use that against him, like I've used for many punchers. And so when he realized that he can't change from being what he is, that's what he is, uh, it would be his own demise. Is it a logical concern that John David Jackson spent four or five years in your camp working under Nassim Richardson and therefore might be seen as the guy most capable of instructing somebody else on how to beat you? He might know cert certain things, obviously. He was in my house, so he should know what my furniture looked like to a point. But they was five, six years ago. I changed some of that furniture. Now he embarrasses Cloud with another flush right hand shot. Are you in some ways a better fighter at 49 approaching 50 than you were at 30, 35, 40, 45? Smarter. Smarter and understanding that only thing I have to do is keep my energy level up and throw more punches than my opponent. I had to make that adjustment. I had to add that to what's already there to the house. I'm more excited now in the last two or three years that I've been probably in the last eight years of my career leading up to those last two, three years. I put a lot of people to sleep over the years when they watch me, and I want to wake them up before I leave. And it's working, because you're more of a ticket seller right now than you've ever been in your career. Yes. You draw higher television ratings now than you have previously yes. in your career. Yes. And this is your identity, obviously. Yes. So what stimulus does it take for you to finally leave all this behind? Another life in boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Back live at ringside with Roy Jones. Roy, your old buddy B-Hop is one of a kind. You heard the explicit comparison to Pavlik. 
he believes that he can win this fight the same way he beat Pavlik, winning virtually every second of every round. John David Jackson says that if Sergei Kovalev focuses on hitting Bernard's body and forgets that his head is even there, he'll be the first man to knock Bernard Hopkins out. What do you think is going to happen? Well, first thing is, Kovalev is definitely no Kelly Pavlik. He's not a lead foot like Kelly Pavlik. He's not predictable like Kelly Pavlik, and he does have lead in his punches, but it's a little bit quicker lead than what Kelly Pavlik had. So it will not be the same fight as he saw with Kelly Pavlik. However, John David Jackson does make a little bit of sense. The man is old, therefore you must beat the man's body. He's an old, slick coon. You're never going to hit his head right away. So leave his head alone, go to his body. Work the body, make him tired, get him a little fatigued where he has to be there, and then the head will open up. If you don't take that approach, then you're in for a long night. And you're at the mercy of Bernard's craft. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape between Bernard Hopkins and Sergey Kovalev. And of course, you can't look at the number at the top left without being amazed. He turned.